Hello and welcome to video one for week three. In this video we're going to go over some of the most important definitions of the course, things that we're going to build on for the rest of the course. Let's get right into it. I want to define a linear combination of a set of vectors. And this term actually applies to all sorts of places in mathematics. We can have linear combinations of functions, all sorts of things. Here we're going to have linear combinations of vectors. So say I have some vectors in some space Rn. A linear combination of vectors is anything I can get by multiplying the vectors by constants and adding them up. And that makes sense that it has the term linear because to multiply by constants and to add things up, that's what linearity means algebraically in a lot of settings. So by any, any number of vectors, linear combinations means I can multiply any of them by any constants. These constants can be different. Add them all up, see what I get. The definition of span of a set of vectors is all possible linear combinations. So one linear combination is a choice of particular constants out of the vectors. A span is the subset of Rn that you get by adding all possible linear combinations together. And it has this notation, span with the set of vectors in front of it. And it's going to be a pretty important object, and we'll talk more about its properties in a future video. I can also have an offset span, which is a useful thing talk about again for properties that we'll get to in a future video but an offset span would be a span of some number of vectors and then plus some other fixed offset um, so if you think of span as a, as, a, as a particular space the offset just sort of moves it around you can think of this as shifting the space by a vector u and we call that shift an offset but here the definition linear combination and the definition span two definitions we're going to use over and over and over again in the course to make sure those definitions feel comfortable. A few things about spans. Spans are all linear combinations, but they can have redundancies in them. So the span of 1, 2 is the line through the vector 1, 2. So the vector 1, 2 is here. The span is all multiples of it, because the span says take all possible constants times this vector. There's no adding to do, because there's only one vector here. So the vector here is the vector going to 1, 2, but the span is the entire line that goes all the way up and all the way down. If I looked at the span of 1, 2, and 2, 4, well, 2, 4 is already another point on that line. So in this sense, 2, 4 is actually completely redundant in this span. So one of the tricky things about working with spans is if we just sort of write down a span of a set of vectors, its properties and it, it, its shape and what kind of object we get out of it is not immediately clear because of this this issue of redundancies that this extra vector 2 4 doesn't really add any information to the span and we're going to get into the issues of redundancies and describing spans geometrically again in a future video another really important definition i want to give you is the definition of linear independence so let's say i have some vectors in rn these vectors are called linearly independent and this is a bit of a strange technical definition, so I'm going to go through it slowly. They're called linearly independent. If the equation, some constant times the first plus some constant times the second plus some constant times the third, so forth and so on, if that equals zero, has only the solution that all the constants have to be zero. So let me, let me make this clear with a bit of an example. So say I have the vectors... 3, 2, and 0, 4. 3, negative 2, and 0, 4. Then I have this equation. The only way I can make this equation work is if a is equal to 0 and if b is equal to 0. There are no other constants. There's no special choices of a and b that make this work other than a equals 0, b equals 0. a equals 0, b equals 0 always works. So it sets everything to 0. So this vector is set to 0. This vector is set to 0. Add zeros together. You just get, you just get 0. So a equals 0, b equals 0 is guaranteed to work. If it's the only possible solution, we say the vectors are linearly independent. And to show that sometimes it's not, if I had the vector 3, negative 2, and the vector negative 6, 4, then it happens that negative 2 times this plus 1 times this would give me uh, negative 6. Sorry, this should be negative 1 here. Negative 1 times this. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. Uh, positive 4, negative 4 is 0. So if I have a negative 2 here and a negative 1 here, then that's a choice of the constants a1, a2, a3, 
that's not all zeros. So that tells me that these two vectors, this one and this one, are not linearly independent. Linear independence means that the only way to solve this kind of equation is to set all the constants equal to zero. All right, I said this was a weird technical algebraic definition. Let me give you a geometric notion as well. The geometric notion of linear independence is that the things point in fundamentally different directions. These two vectors, if I drew them in the plane, uh, 3, negative 2 is down there, uh, 0, 4 is up there, they're pointing in not perpendicular but essentially different directions. They don't really share a direction. Whereas these two vectors, if I drew them, they'd actually be vectors on the same line. So vectors which are linearly independent are vectors which all point in fundamentally a new direction. And that applies in any dimension you want. If you have five linearly independent vectors in R5, then those five vectors point in fundamentally different geometric directions in five-dimensional space. So you can think of linear independence as pointing in different directions. Now, it doesn't have to be perfectly perpendicular. They can sort of be at an angle to each other, but they're not sort of in the same line or three vectors in the same plane or sort of sharing common directions. I want to say a couple things about calculations with the definitions in this video. So we have linear combinations. So one question we can ask is if we're given a certain vector, how can we express this vector as a linear combination of some other vectors? How can I express negative 5, 3 as a linear combination of 1, 1 and 4, 0? So linear combination means I multiply the first vector by a constant, I multiply the second vector by a constant, and I add them up. So the question of can negative 5, 3 be expressed as a linear combination of these other vectors turns into the question of, well, can I find a and b that make this work? And what I do here is I write this in components um, so that negative 5 is a times 1, which is a, and b times 4, which is 4b and 3 is a times 1, which is a, and b times 0, which is 0. And I forgot a negative sign here, we'll make that correction. And then I've got a system, and I can solve the system. Um, so this 0 times b means that a is just 3. Um, and then solving this, this is actually going to give me uh, b is equal to negative 8 is equal to 4b, so b is going to be equal to negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. And so there is a set of numbers that give me this linear combination, so it is possible to write negative 5, 3 as a linear combination of 1, 1 and 4, 0. The point here is that the question gets turned into a system of equations, and a lot of things in linear algebra, if they can get turned into a system of equations, are things we're going to be happy with, and we'll talk more about that in future weeks. Let me talk about one other calculation, checking linear independence. So I said linear independence geometrically is all pointing in different directions. Algebraically, it means that these three are linearly independent. If this equation has only the solutions, a equals zero, b equals zero, c equals zero. Well, how do I figure that out? How do I check if that equation has only those solutions? Well, I can look at the first coordinate, so a times zero, b times one, c times two, that has to be equal to zero. I can look at the second coordinate, a times three, b times negative one, c times zero. That has to be zero. And I can look at the third coordinate, a times negative six, b times negative one, c times seven. That has to be zero. And again, I get a system of three equations and three variables, and I can try and solve this. I'm not going to show the solution in this video. In this case, it in fact is true that a equals zero, b equals zero, c equals zero is in fact the only solution. So these, in fact, are linearly independent, but that's not guaranteed. You'd have to solve the system to figure it out. The point being, again, that checking linear independence, like checking linear combinations in the previous slide, by looking at each co uh, coordinate of the vector, by looking at the first coordinate, the second coordinate, the third coordinate, we can turn it into a system of linear equations and solve it that way.